Hello there. Welcome to this very first episode of the Beauty for Survivors podcast. I am Rafaela. I am a professional makeup artist and stylist, transformation coach. I'm also the founder of Beauty for Survivors. This all started as a passion project about 10 years ago after all of the hours that I spent on set and backstage having amazing conversations with fellow survivors about what we've been through, what we've survived, how we've survived, the things we've lost, the things that we grieve, the things that we look forward to. I found as a makeup artist that very often, even if the conversations were happening, they were happening kind of in little snippets, especially backstage. We would get talking and then everybody would have to rush off and go down the runway or do another take for a film or a TV show. And when I worked at traditional makeup counters, I found that, again, these same types of conversations were happening a lot. Makeup is extremely powerful. It is something that is very personal. It's very intimate. You know, the intimacy of having someone work that closely to your face, there's a lot of trust. And so a lot of times people just let their guard down. They share a lot about their life. And so that happened a lot at makeup counters as well. And also there, it was impossible to really have a full conversation about what someone had been through simply because the retail environment is really not the most conducive to having, you know, a longer, meaningful conversation. So I started to get frustrated with the fact that I saw that makeup really makes things happen for people. It's not just all of this negativity that we see a lot um, on YouTube and in other online environments where there's a lot of superficial things going on, people judging each other for this, that, and the other thing. Honestly, when you bring makeup back to what it really is, it's color, it's textures, it's a way for us to be embodied, it's a way to reclaim our voice and express ourselves and really tell our own story. It's extremely powerful, it's art. And art is healing. And so I believe personally that makeup can be very healing. So. This all started about 10 years ago with all of these conversations and throughout the years, through a pandemic, through many ups and downs, through many moves, through all kinds of different challenges and detours, I have continued with Beauty for Survivors. I have continued to have these conversations and about a year ago, I decided that I wanted to turn it into an official podcast and I had no idea the kind of opposition and obstacles that I would run into over the following 12 months bring me pretty much today it's been about a year since I was working on first putting all of this together so skipping forward um, today's episode is the first official episode I actually had some recorded previously there were some tech issues and we're going to re-record those and bring them back so that you can enjoy them as well but for today we have an amazing first conversation with an amazing creator and filmmaker named Arzu so Arzu and I met happily at a film festival last summer so this is going back to July of 2023 I think it was roughly July, June, July. And I went to a film festival for uh, Prague Film Institute. So it was a day to basically enjoy the amazing creativity and celebrate the accomplishments of the film students who were there at the time. And I was very excited to be able to go and I fully expected to see amazing things, which I did. I did not expect to see something that would stop me in my tracks and not only leave me speechless, but have me in tears. I I was crying um, sitting there in this dark auditorium watching this short film. The film is called Disquiet and it is one of the most remarkable, poignant and accurate depictions in a visual film format of what the actual internal experience is um, as a survivor of assault and it was incredibly powerful and you know it has to be be powerful if it packs that much of a punch in a short film you know it's one thing if it's like a feature film which is amazing but short film is hard short stories are hard I think anyone knows if you've worked to condense something down into a shorter format you have to be really good to drive those points home and to tell a story that is extremely powerful and that stays with the audience long after 
you've closed the book or the curtain has come down on the on the stage, so to speak. So it was incredible. And I look forward to lots of people being able to see this film. And at the time during the film festival, I was so excited because after each film, the audience was supposed to have a moment to basically chat with the filmmaker and ask questions and get feedback. And of course I was very interested to hear more. I was super curious. I was like, who made this? How did this happen? This is amazing. How is it so accurate? And unfortunately, the scheduling and the timing of the program that day got a little bit turned upside down. And so they really didn't have that much time for the filmmakers to actually interact with the audience. And so it turned out that the film was shown. We all got to see it, but then our zoo didn't get to actually speak with the audience answer any questions or, or really um, give much uh, context in terms of her perspective and all of the the why behind this film and just all the things that I was very curious to know as a survivor and as a creative person, obviously. So I made sure to find our zoo afterwards, which I did, and I introduced myself and I said, that was amazing. I would like to know more about your story. I would like to know more about how this film even came to be. Would you be interested in being part of my interview series for Beauty for Survivors? Because this is what it's all about, is to talk about the intersection of abuse and survival and creativity and storytelling and how that takes place through film, through makeup, and through, through many other forms of, of creativity because I honestly believe that everyone has their own way of telling their story. And I am so excited for all of the other interviews that are coming along for people to really share their story um, and share their survival and how beauty has been a part of that process. So I won't ramble on too much longer. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a background on who our amazing guest is today. We actually recorded this back in October of last year. And again, this entire project has been a massive labor of love. And I did not know at that point that I was about to go through another subsequent, I guess it's been about six months of really, really, really um, difficult and challenging health circumstances, which actually um, just turned into um, another stay in the hospital recently. This was supposed to be published in March. I was in the emergency room. <laughs> so, um, again, lots of curveballs, lots of detours, lots of different obstacles that we all encounter along the way, along our personal story, whether it's survival, like it is for a lot of us, or just living your daily life. So I really want to encourage you, please don't give up. If there's something that you're working on, if there's something that you're dreaming of, don't let the delay stop you. I'm so glad that I didn't let the delay stop me, and I'm so happy to be here introducing our amazing guest for today. So let me let me segue now and let you get into it. So enjoy. Enjoy this conversation. Please interact and uh, let us know in the comments your thoughts, and thank you so much for tuning in and listening, and um, subscribe so that you can be notified when the next interview goes live. And without any further ado, please enjoy this amazing conversation that I've had with Arzu. So here we are. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you to everyone watching and listening for being here as well. Um, we have the illustrious presence of Magellan for those of you who are tuning in via YouTube. And for those who are listening, just know that he's here. <laughs> um, so. Okay, so I'd like to, to jump back in where we were a few minutes ago before we actually started recording. We were chatting. Yeah. And so so we met earlier this, this year in the summer, so a few months ago, at the, the film festival for your school. Yeah. And you were telling me about how you did um, studying cinematography, and now it's more into directing. And I am curious to start with about... What kind of drew you into this this world of, of filmmaking? Is it something you did already on your own, or did you just kind of jump into it? I mean, I've always loved films, and uh, I've watched a lot of them growing up. And mm -hmm. even my full family, we all watch films a, a lot. Mm -hmm. And so there was like always this keen interest, and I have always made up so many stories in my head about every small thing. And I mean, 
most of my childhood i was like a really quiet child so i have all the stories in my head mm. i used to make up my own friends my stories and every single thing so i the storytelling part started very young, uh, early on but uh, i was not very sure if i should do this or not because you know it's uh, still fairly difficult to get into something like this and yeah you never know what's going to happen and it's not consistent mm. but uh, yeah yeah i i decided to, uh, i told my parents and then here i am that's amazing cool well so going back to the um the day of of the film festival which was a really i mean so many incredible um creations and works to experience that day and um as we had chatted a little bit again before we we started recording here I, i was not expecting to be to be so to to have such an incredible experience i mean i knew that i was going to see amazing things but i i had no idea what i was about to experience in seeing your film um this quiet and the time that came after with the limited time for q and a mm-hmm. there wasn't a lot of time for that and so part of what what this context is for with with beauty for survivors as as an idea and as a, a conversation that's been going on for a long time what i found in the work that i do as a makeup artist whether it's um on set with people for film or backstage at a fashion show things like that invariably conversations will come up about life and about things yeah. that we've all been through and what i noticed was that you know you you connect on something and there's like these few minutes of like oh my gosh like yeah. you've been through it or i've been through it or just sharing life but then yeah. it's time to walk the runway or it's time to go to the next you know take and so these little snippets of conversations um where to me one of the hardest things is to connect on something that's really deep and personal and then you get cut off and interrupted and there's like where do you where do you pick up the conversation again that yeah. type of thing so I started Beauty for Survivors as a way to kind of create that missing extra context of okay, well you've met people on set or on a project and you connect but then there's not really a safe space to continue having mm-hmm. a meaningful conversation. So that's what all of this is and on that note, going back to the day of the film festival, um there there wasn't a lot of time to, again yeah. because of how busy it was to really go more in depth on this incredible film mm-hmm. that you made. So that's why we're here and thank you very much for being here. So I would love to know more just about um the back story on this to begin with with okay. the film. So what what was it because I know you had shared with me that it's it's a it's based on a friend's story. Mhm. What was it that inspired you let's say or or prompted you to take that friend's story and and go with that? I'm okay so I have Uh, almost uh 7 to 8 people in total mm-hmm. who have gone through this and i know them personally uh seeing their condition and seeing how they are mm-hmm. it's very difficult for me to be put in like that situation mm-hmm. and it's like um it's sometimes it's just like in the middle of the night you'll get a call and then you know it's like a life and death situation you know mm-hmm. i'm responsible for someone else's life and it's I, i don't know what to do in that moment and i feel so helpless so <clears throat> i think it was uh, knowing first hand like with with these people what they go through and uh, from the films that i have seen it's mostly i've seen they are trying to seek justice which is all right and which mm-hmm. is very important as mm-hmm. well but uh most of the time we overlook the fact that <clears throat> this person is going through a lot of things in that time period because okay one thing is getting sexually abused mm-hmm. and the other thing is living with it mm-hmm. living with the fact that you have been sexually abused mm-hmm. and that that it doesn't go away, go away mm-hmm. with your full life it doesn't go away it sticks with you and it's like a haunting memory yeah from your past or your whatever is happening and it's mm-hmm. so difficult and i think it was for me a way uh to show that show these people that uh even though i can't physically with words i can't explain it to you that you know why you deserve to be here and why you need to be here mm-hmm. i thought it's a good way to um uh make it make a film out of it so that they can see 
themselves uh, in third person mm-hmm. and they can see that none of it's their fault mm-hmm. and whatever they're going through it's <clears throat> no one can imagine it mm-hmm. except them we can all uh, sit and tell them that we understand i understand mm-hmm. but um we can't we can't understand it mm. we can be there we can sympathize we can we can have all, give all the support in this world that you want but i can't understand it mm. wow <coughs> yeah um it's interesting too what you mentioned about and, and this was something i'd also wanted to to ask you about because i felt that the the way everything is portrayed first of all is it's very unique in terms of what I've what I've already seen in in TV and film yeah. because again and I I say this a lot in conversations with people as a survivor and and with fellow survivors that um you, okay, you know there's been some progress in terms of the hashtag Me Too movement which I'm grateful for but there is there tends to be an overemphasis on the the immediate sort of what you had talked about of going to the police or this sort of instant reaction mode of, um, you know, the the police dramas or the yeah. investigation, and I'm not discounting any of that, but there really is not anything that is dedicated to what you had mentioned, which is what is life actually like on a day-to-day basis mm-hmm. long after those events have actually <coughs> passed. Um, so that was one of the things that again i was yeah. you know there that day watching all of the films and i was very intrigued by the title i thought what an interesting word to use yeah. it's very evocative just quiet yeah. like it it says so much and it's and yet it's very subtle and yeah. so i was really intrigued i was like what what you know what i was i was very curious about what i was about to see mm-hmm. and then as i watched i really connected with what you just described which is i felt like somebody was saying exactly what you just said to me which is i see you and it wasn't your fault and i mean i just i i i started weeping right there where i was sitting because oh. it's such a it's you managed to um to illustrate in such a, a sensitive but also very accurate way this sort of inner world of what's going on internally but also externally so thank you for that first of all for for providing an alternative let's say to the, the typical mainstream portrayal of of sexual assault yeah. and violence in that way which again i'm not at all discounting that these things are portrayed in media but it tends to really heavily focus on the shock value of it yeah um and not what a survivor actually experiences again as an adult surviving something from childhood or things that run through someone's life up to a certain point because it's different for everyone So um how how did you go about weaving the the different elements of the film together in terms mm-hmm. of the story because it's one thing to sort of know a friend's story how how were you able to sort of weave cuz you wove so many different elements together how did how was that creative process for you i'm really interested to know <laughs> i mean uh, you'd be surprised to know for whatever i did show there's a lot more i mean mm. i mean i've shown like the major aspects of it what i thought were really important as well and uh, i mean i didn't write it because i don't consider myself as a very good writer but mm. uh, i it was like a collaborative thing between me and my friend okay and uh, <clears throat> she was like uh, the voice of reason for me at that time because i had so many things i'm like this also we should add this also we should add this is important mm. and she said okay calm down <laughs> <laughs> relax <laughs> and pick out yeah we'll uh, pick out each things mm. and um so it started with uh, how uh, how i thought uh, because uh, it's like mostly a lot a lot of the times they do have hallucinations also it, it does come with uh, the most severe form of depression hallucinations are very common mm-hmm. so uh, i thought that since uh, with my friend also she has gone through these hallucinations and it's so difficult for her and to know that uh, she keeps on seeing the same that guy she keeps yeah. on seeing that guy yeah. and it's so you don't don't know what to do and then mm-hmm. they are seeing it you have no fucking what should i do for you it's so difficult and so i thought that is really important to show that they do go through hallucinations also yeah so it's like a form of um, Yeah, psychotic depression. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, I started with that. 
and then I started thinking about how it would be on a daily basis and I started thinking about her how she goes through her life on a daily basis mm -hmm. going to school so the outside scene that I put there where she thought that people are looking at her and, and she's like oh, let's cover myself mm -hmm. and <clears throat> and I decided on not making her wear uh, really revealing clothes mm -hmm. because a lot of the times uh, I mean uh, back at uh, home in India I've heard a lot of the times people saying that um, she must be wearing wrong clothes Mm -hmm. how you can't provoke people to do something like this yeah and <clears throat> i think the worst part the worst things i've ever heard is for people to say that rape is a fantasy and it's just being uh, a little more to the rough side and all of that i'm like please yeah it's rape is nothing but sexual violence mm -hmm. and it is violence against the person they're going through mm -hmm. and uh, it's nothing else mm -hmm. so with that uh, mindset I decided to <clears throat> make her wear a jacket and like only like how my arm is seeing this mm -hmm. much and mm -hmm. I told her to pull it down yeah so even that much of skin she's not uh, able to show mm -hmm. to the world because she thinks that it's her fault mm -hmm. so like because she thinks it's, it's her fault uh, I mean at, how can a 12 year old girl I, I, firstly, no one can provoke someone to do this and then mm. let alone a 12-year-old girl. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. And uh, then with aspects of uh, feeling touched by things. So that's what that was another thing that I felt that was really important is just lying down and there are hands all over you. Everyone is touching yes. you everywhere. Yeah. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> even when it's not happening, you always feel like that. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's the most I, I can't even imagine it's like the most disgusting feeling in this world to feel like that that mm -hmm. there are so many people just touching you that you're just an object mm -hmm. so objectification mm -hmm. was one another thing that I really wanted to show because that's how she felt as well mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. and but uh, I mean initially I did plan on having like a, uh, I mean, a sad ending let's say that mm -hmm. uh, so I did plan on uh, making her commit suicide but uh, but then my voice of reason <laughs> she told me that uh, as as important as it is to show that that mm. you know it's so difficult for them to live they might think that uh, it's the only way out mm -hmm. and I was like no that is not the way out at all that's not what I plan on doing so then we decided on uh, the ending, how we ended it with and mm -hmm. reconnecting with your inner child, which is mm -hmm. really important, I think, which is <clears throat> because something so important, your childhood has been taken away from you. Yeah. You don't get the mm -hmm. privilege to enjoy your childhood like the rest of the kids and and you're just sulking in one corner, you're going through all of this alone, you're harming yourself, you're cutting your hands mm -hmm. and what not trying to kill yourself constantly and the privilege of having a wonderful childhood has been taken away from you mm -hmm. and to reconnect with that old self before anything ever happened who you were before this I mean I showed it through dance which is uh, I think a similar case for her as well because she used to be a really good dancer and once all of this happened completely stopped it mm -hmm. when I, that, that's when I started noticing the difference between my friend who I've known for so long and now they've completely changed mm -hmm. they're not doing something that they love the most yeah so it was really difficult to uh, see someone go through something like that and I'm so confused I'm, what happened mm -hmm. and um, so it was really important for me to show that um, she what I think I mean I'm no like <laughs> therapist or a psychiatrist to tell someone how to heal but what I thought in my way how her healing process should be or how it would be easier or how it would uh, make her feel uh, like a complete person mm -hmm. since she's been feeling so empty from uh, since when it happened so mm -hmm. to feel complete I thought uh, she needs to reconnect with who she was mm -hmm. because that person is not gone that person is just hidden and that person is afraid because someone outgoing has gone through this so they think that because of my behavior I'm so outgoing I will talk so much mm -hmm. so something like this will happen to me again so I need to protect myself so I thought uh, it is important to bring that person back mm -hmm. and to have that process of healing in that certain way so mm -hmm. I mean yeah 
having so many different ideas to put it in and uh, even so many different other stories of other people that I've heard. Um, we picked out uh, each thing that we thought it would fit with the storytelling and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Wow. Wow. So yeah, it really was like a bit a process of weaving these different elements together. That's amazing. Um, and I mean, the for me when I saw it, I was really um, moved by the sensitivity of the, those. Let's say that the core elements that you put together of the story of what has happened to this person and how they're feeling years later, how it's impacted daily life. Mm -hmm but also the ending obviously was incredibly powerful and so I was already emotional from feeling I, I again I, I think I told you when we we first uh, spoke together I mean I, I felt like I was seeing something on for the first time of someone's actually showing what it's like on a daily basis for me of yes like I have a tendency I, I, I still there's many things that I work on and will probably be working on for the rest of my life to to give myself the freedom to be, to do, and to say, because it's such a long process of um, being able to understand that it's not your fault, especially when things start happening when you're that young. It's like we said here at the beginning, mm -hmm. the programming is so powerful at that age that it's it's very difficult to go in and and change those mm, those elements of programming. It's possible, but it's more challenging when it starts at yeah. such an early age. Yeah. Um, so even the things about, you know, covering yourself from head to toe and I, I think everyone, I can't say everyone, but I, I, it, it's one of the most commonly, um, held misconceptions is that, oh, what were you wearing? And it must've been something you were wearing. And, um, it's just, it's, it's such a, it's such a, a false thing that it has anything to do because you can literally be covered head to toe and, and something, someone will still see you as just an object like you yeah. talked about. And so, um, and, and the feeling touched like that, just even when you're by yourself, you still feel these things. And so incredible portrayal of all of that. Mm -hmm. And, and then to get to the ending again, because I don't know that I've seen anything where it's, where, where the because it's kind of this paradoxical thing of yes there's this reality of everything that I've been through and survived and the horror of it and the the daily challenges that I face and others yeah. and when I say I'm kind of using a universal um, yeah. I as a survivor um, there is all of that but then even with everything that's been taken away and stolen then we get to the point of okay how am I going to decide to live my life and yeah. how can I reclaim some of those things that have been taken from me? Yeah. So the ending, um, that just put me right over the edge. <laughs> I was already crying that I got to it. I was like, what? This is incredible. <laughs> like, yes, I wanted to just stand up and start cheering. And then I remember there was the question from the audience of, of being, they, they were very confused by the ending. And of course, for me as a survivor, I was like, oh, it's, it's the most beautiful thing. It makes the most sense. And it's so so powerful to I think it was my teacher uh, so initially I was talking to him like uh, when I had this idea mm -hmm. I went to him uh, he was the first person I went to and I was like no this is like I, I will make her like go, commit suicide so since he, that, that's why he was a little confused because my beginning was something else to what I've done it yeah. was a completely different process because in the starting there were so many different elements as well that I wanted to put in but uh, towards the end of it what it came out to be it was like <laughs> carved out perfectly mm. and that's why he was a little bit more confused <laughs> than you know what just happened yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah I mean I had to, I, I think I told you I kind of had to restrain myself because um, I really, I really wanted to raise my hand at that point and, and just say thank you and add a couple of thoughts, but it was such a crunched time in that space that I said, um, we'll, we'll chat later, but it was the, the ending and I look forward, to, I look forward to everyone being able to see it hopefully once it's out in the world and available, um, because it's such, it's just so beautifully done. Mm -hmm. Um, and the ending was as sensitive in its portrayal of, of that part with mm -hmm. the inner child yeah. and and the fact that you, you can sort of hold hold the hand of, of that inner child and say, okay, you know, we can't go back and change what other people did 
and their decisions, but I can make a decision today for that. And that's something that I do on a daily basis. So, um, and again, it's not anything that I've ever really seen portrayed, especially in a film. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the power of film for storytelling and illustrating, I think just can't be, um, I'm not sure that it can be replaced by by other things. Like obviously, there's different forms of storytelling, and there's poetry and writing and and music and yeah. painting. Uh, but to see this portrayed in such a powerful way um, on the screen like that, mm -hmm. I think not just for me as a survivor, but for others who know survivors, like in, in your case, and are close to them, it's it's such a gift to be able to see something accurately portrayed because it makes it a lot more real and relatable. I think so. The film itself, obviously, as we've been chatting about from start to finish, has this beautiful um, artistry to it, obviously, the art-making part, the storytelling part. So what were some of the potential challenges or difficulties? Did you, you, know, did you run into anything in the process of, of making the film that... Yeah, I mean, uh, for me personally, it was uh, difficult because I was uh, kind of living what she's going through mm. and I, I and it like every time we used to shoot that part it is like break my heart each time we're like I'm so sorry this happened to you mm. and then it was uh, uh, for the uh, male actor uh, his name is Nirov and uh, he played the rapist in that and uh, for him, it was very difficult as well because he was having this dilemma. Like, I I get so angry with people like this, and I have to play a person like this. So, yeah. I kind of told him that, uh, you know, if when you you hate people like this, and these people go uh, go ahead and do all of these things, and without any consequences, a lot of the times. Uh, so you could be a person playing this character, even if it's a bad character, but in the end when someone who is a survivor watches this it, they would feel happy mm -hmm. and i think you should you should think about it in that way mm -hmm. and then he did agree and i'm really glad he did and it was really great to work with him like even there were like a couple of scenes where i saw like after we were done uh, shooting that and cut i used to see some tears in his eyes and mm -hmm. uh, and even when we shot the actual rape part it was very, very difficult for him as well and uh, I think for me that was the most difficult part to shoot because I'm living that life yeah. for her now and he is playing that something that he doesn't like at all mm -hmm. so th that was very very difficult mm -hmm. <clears throat> and to get it on point and to get it correctly because I don't I don't I don't want it to seem like erotica so which is uh, I don't want it I don't want people to think that oh well, whatever yeah. people with stupid fantasies yeah. so I don't want them to think that it's erotica or anything it is obscenity that's mm -hmm. all it is mm -hmm. and uh, it's disgusting and I I wanted anyone who's watching and even if they're not a survivor mm -hmm. to understand that disgust that people feel even after it's done mm -hmm. so it was really uh, very challenging that part mm -hmm. as well and uh, yeah I mean <laughs> I mean the intimate scene for me was uh, like uh, the intimate scene as well it was like a little bit more difficult for me to direct it and um, <clears throat> and even for the actress uh, her name is Bhavi and uh, it was difficult for her to also do it, but somehow we managed to go through it and do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I mean, the most difficult was actually being present and seeing all of that happen around me. Yeah. Because I, I I could never visualize it, and I was doing something that will make it completely visual, and uh, mm -hmm. now I have to see what she actually went through. Mm -hmm. So it was like I know about it, and now I'm seeing it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's very powerful. I mean, um, I think for anyone on set in that context, whether it's the actors or crew, direction, um, I think with, with any of the stories that are told, there is that, that element of stepping into an identity or a story and, and you are bringing it to life and it is experiencing it sort of firsthand 
And um, I, I know that in, in other interviews and things, you know, I've heard actors especially talk about what it's like to get into an extremely intense, you know, like actors who've had to play killers and things like that, um, that it's very psychologically challenging for, for obvious reasons. But again, I, I don't know that there's so much discussion about what it's like for everybody else, especially directing um, anyone who's in that moment. And like you said, having uh, suddenly seen something come to life that we really, if you're, if you're a survivor, you already know. But yeah. if you're not, then then it's very hard, like you said, probably to even visualize it or imagine. So, yeah. um, thank you again for for having the the courage and the commitment to step into that and to sort of volunteer yourself <coughs> and the rest of the the rest mm-hmm. of the team to to step into a story and embody things that are you know unthinkable in many yeah. ways. Um, so on the the flip side of that, what? What were some of the things that you found the most rewarding about the process of telling the story? <coughs> so, uh, actually, uh, when you came to talk to me <laughs> from behind, I hear someone say, this person, this person, <laughs> and I turn around, I see you, and uh, you came and told me that you're a survivor, and I think that was like the... I was so nervous the entire time, and I was like, since my edit wasn't complete and it it was incomplete for me and it uh, it was like irritating me a lot that I can't couldn't finish it and I didn't show like how good it could be I couldn't do it that that well especially for the screening since we had like a less than a week to edit it but when you came and you told me that you resonated with it and you really liked it and I, that was like the most rewarding for me to mm. hear from a survivor mm. that they liked it and they thought it was accurate I was like that's that's all I need in this world I don't Aww. have to hear any other compliment I don't <laughs> have to hear my teachers telling me if it was good or bad mm. you came and told me and <clears throat> there's one other person who cried who came and cried in front of me and even my friend he also started crying and I was like, this is, I, I can't, I can't even believe it. Mm. Do something that was so uh, incomplete for me and I was watching it and I was getting irritated. Uh, this is a mistake, that's a mistake, that's a mistake. Mm. To later hear people like you and my friends mm-hmm. who really actually felt emotional by it. Mm-hmm. And because like, uh, for me it was like a numbing thing because it didn't bother me anymore. Right. Because after all the shooting and after knowing everything, I was like numb to it. I'm like, I have no feelings towards it. I don't know if this scene is emotional or not. I don't know. <laughs> You're so close to it, yes. <clears throat> yeah, I was too close to it, correct? Yeah. And I, I, I didn't know how people could react to it because I, I don't know if it's emotional enough or not. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if people will think that it's disgusting enough or not because I, I don't know anymore. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know. I have, I, um, I've been on set. I've heard, I've directed these scenes and I've heard my friend, multiple people talk about it, not just my friend, multiple people talk about it and how difficult it is. And at that point while watching, I was just pointing out my mistakes. And then later on when you come and my friends come, it was like, yeah. um, but especially when you came, I mean, that was the most rewarding for me. Oh. Like after you came, I just went to my free time. I, so <laughs> well, I was afraid to, I was like, I hope I don't, you know, I hope that, I hope that this is not too much to like just rush up to you and say, I have to talk to you. But I didn't, I just didn't want to miss the opportunity. And, and also, like I said, it, it for, for such an incredible Story and and for that experience to take place within the context of a, a day long film festival and to know that the Q and A time had been so crunched and mm-hmm. I, I I didn't want to miss the opportunity to at least say thank you um, and and to especially um, kind of affirm at least the the power of the ending because I know that was kind of the main thing that was that was brought up in the Q and A time um, and I, I wanted to say at least for my part that that the ending. Um, was just it was it was so um, life giving, you know, in the in the context of, of everything else that had been shown that was so incredibly um, accurate from my point of view. So, um, and I hope as well as you had mentioned that it's good to know you got some some feedback from other people as well. And how how about your your friend who was the voice of reason for you in in the storytelling process? Yes. What's <clears throat> what's the feedback from them? She. Uh... <laughs> I mean, like, uh, she was, like, my uh, support system the entire time. Mm-hmm. Uh, she and, like, a couple of other friends as well, not not just her, but ma- a lot of them. And um, there, there was a time before filming itself, I was um, 
I was like, I, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I have the guts in me to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, to, we were getting closer to finishing the script and I was getting more and more and more nervous day by day by day. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can do this. And then I spoke to a friend and she said, if anyone can do it, that's you. Mm -hmm. And that sort of was like, okay. But then, I, I mean, e even those compliments or even those words, I mean, they, they didn't matter that much I'm not saying that they were not helping me they were trying to help they didn't matter that much because I sort of realized the importance of this mm -hmm. I thought I mean like you you yourself being a survivor you you walk every single day you get up every single morning you do every single thing to make yourself feel better if I covered away now then all of this is worthless mm -hmm. and everything that you guys go through and people who have gone through all of this it's I would be uh, letting all of them down mm -hmm. and especially my friend as mm -hmm. well and I thought uh, okay now let's not let's just go for it mm -hmm. and then I did yeah and then <clears throat> I mean even before the film started yeah she started yelling at so and I was like okay <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, as soon as it was over, I'm like, I'm rushing out. Please let me out, let me out, let me out. And this other friend, she's like uh, stopping everyone from talking to me. <laughs> I'm just standing at it. I'm like, uh, I don't know how it was. And then people started coming slowly. And yeah. And like, Started settling down a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's what I was saying about the, the day of. I, I wanted to be sensitive to um, probably what the intensity of the of the day, the experience was for everyone. And so I was saying, that's why I was saying, I was like, I hope I, it's not too much for me to like, come running up to you and introduce myself. I thought maybe she needs a little... It was quite funny because you just gave I was just hearing some... I'm just standing my own business and I hear from behind, this person, this person. I'm like, you there. Yeah. I was not expecting that after this person, this person. I was not. I was like... Oh. You're the person. Yes, it's you. That was funny, yes. Well, that's because I wanted to make sure I was trying to... Because I, I didn't know how long I'd be able to stay. My schedule that day was a yeah, bit crazy. And so I was very focused. I was like... Like, I have to find her. So that's why I was, like, <laughs> looking with a laser everywhere. And I'm like, there she is. Go. <laughs> so, yeah. It started with this. And then as soon as you hear it, I'm like, oh, I feel so bad. And then, then you said that you really liked it. And then yeah. back, back up again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, so uh, <clears throat> I have a question that kind of has two sides. Because kind of like going, going, you know, in these, these in kind of an organic progression from how it started for you and the experience of it. And then, so I guess the, the, the two sides of this question would be, is there anything that has surprised you about kind of, I don't want to say the aftermath because that sounds kind of negative, but the, um, the unfolding of things for you then sort of after that film festival and after it was seen and sort of, cause you know, you, when we as creatives have, a focus like that that's so intense for a certain period of time to make mm -hmm. something and to tell a story. I know <clears throat> that there can be kind of a strange sense of maybe not lost, but almost, okay, what do I do with myself once you've kind of come off of that kind of an intensity? So I'm curious to know, on the one hand, um, how it's been for you, you know, after making it and having some space and distance around it. Um, and then from that, do you see yourself potentially making any other films or projects with, with similar themes in the future? Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a, a, an Oreo sandwich type question. Okay. Two so, for one. Uh, like, so from the first part, like how it was from distancing myself from it. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I do... Uh, I really needed a break from it for sure because mm -hmm. <laughs> while sure. editing also I was seeing the clips multiple times and I'm like I, I can't do this anymore mm -hmm. I saw the film we uh, added uh, another part to it and after that uh, that was done I, I didn't look back at it for two months mm -hmm. like, okay I'm, I can't do it I, I have don't have the uh, emotional capacity anymore mm -hmm. to uh, continue like working on it and uh, sort of trying to figure out how to make it even better or something uh, so I did not work on it for two months but once I came back and we started editing again so it's still going on and mm -hmm. it's still in process but uh, I mean my my feeling after the film was over is like now what mm -hmm. I mean 
after receiving such a reaction i just felt like now next whatever i do is going to be let down oh. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah i i uh, so the second part of it uh, when mm. i work on the same things like yeah i do really like um, subjects like this and i mm-hmm. uh, especially the things that are not talking uh, about enough and we don't speak about it at all and mm-hmm. it's it's just struck the way and um, and i really like to touch upon all of those things mm-hmm. be it something historical be it something that is dark or uh, now now i'm working on a horror film okay so uh, that also includes um, schizophrenia in it so all right so it's like go I, big or go home for you all the time <laughs> <laughs> she's in she's in yes <laughs> yeah i mean yeah why not <laughs> yeah exactly i mean i i agree yeah wow i mean like uh, during the first the first uh, from the this from that i did describe um i was losing sleep i i didn't mm-hmm. sleep for a couple of days and i was getting into this very I myself was mentally good at that time mm-hmm. but I thought that is even better <laughs> so here I'm completely into it now yeah <laughs> that's true I mean, you should always be into it completely yeah. I mean if I don't I I feel like if I don't experience it myself I wouldn't know so yeah. if losing sleep uh, feeling depressed and all of those things come along with it I I will invite it happily mm-hmm. yeah it's like method acting and method directing yeah. for sure <laughs> really <laughs> really yeah. getting into it and experiencing yeah, like, it yes. now now that I'm thinking about the horror film I, I just I, I feel like there, there are people around me since I'm thinking about schizophrenia I'm like oh, I, am I seeing people now is that a hallucination <laughs> am I getting the other I mean I would love to do, experience it once yeah uh, just because I so I can understand for sure yeah. yeah wow <laughs> that's amazing um, well I I am happy to hear that you will uh likely you know touch on some of these themes again in in future work because again um the the artistry in it the sensitivity and the the again the way that you were able to weave different elements together was something that again I don't see really very often um and also coming back to the broader context of of things with like beauty for survivors and and the things that I've witnessed as a survivor but also working with survivors because there's something about there's something about the intimacy of of touching someone's face and and the oh. the way people have to drop their guard to allow me to do their makeup and the way it does create a connection and you know kind of i think everyone kind of is familiar with the idea of going to the hair stylist for example if you get yeah. your hair cut i think most people are familiar with um the idea that that you kind of sit there and people say you know it's like a free therapy session to like talk to your hair stylist yeah. not everybody does but people are more familiar with that as an idea yeah. it's less familiar i think for people to associate things like that in the context of uh makeup and and even just being on set and things like that so one of my what i hope um through conversations like this and and conversations that i have on set and and backstage with people is to um allow more space for things to be shared so that people can see and experience and understand like through your film for example so that people can know what it's like to be a survivor long after police reports are filed or not filed filed or you know long after that initial sort of shock value and and survival mode a lot of us tend to be in some level of survival mode for years after but i'm talking about like the obviously the the initial impact type event mm-hmm. um long after that's passed in terms of time passing and past history um we we still wake up every day like you talked about and there's so many aspects of day-to-day life for survivors that just no one knows because it's never discussed it's never shared and when survivors talk you know if i talk to a survivor or someone sharing their story with me there's kind of this instant recognition and awareness of oh yeah like i i i go through that too and it can be little things like um uh you had mentioned i believe about your one of your friends about you know that they got a lot quieter or something yeah. that they really loved doing they stopped doing and i know for me i've seen it a lot with people where they stopped wearing bright colors or yeah. i had someone talk to me uh when i was sharing about beauty for survivors this was several years ago 
And um, she suddenly became very emotional while we were chatting and tears came to her eyes. And she said, I just now connected the dots. She said that I was, um, she was assaulted at a gym where she went to do her workouts. Mm -hmm. And she said, ever since that point, she stopped wearing her favorite color of lipstick because the two were associated for her that, up, you know, she was taking care of herself and going to the gym and wearing her favorite clothes and wearing her, her favorite makeup. And then the assault happened there at the gym. And I think we all as survivors are initial, it's a survival mechanism to, you know, like wild animals, make yourself smaller, play dead, make yourself as uh, least noticeable as possible. So I hope that through conversations, but especially through films like yours, which I hope there will be many more. I hope that that the film, that your film will be something that people can see and yes, for survivors like myself to feel seen and heard. But I especially hope that in the industry, it's something that really um, shows people what is possible. Because again, I just really haven't seen it. I'm not saying that it hasn't ever been done. I'm sure that there's things that are in production and that people, yes, at this point, um, the things that tend to make it to mainstream, let's say that because there's obviously a dividing line of things that get made and no one knows because algorithms (laughs) (laughs) and the algorithm is, you know, the, the thing that, that tends to keep us from seeing a a lot of things. But, uh, what I hope is that, um, your film reaches as many people as possible, both for the creators and the filmmakers and the storytellers and those of us who it's it's my story you're telling or it's someone else's story that you're telling and it's incredibly healing and empowering to to yeah. feel like somebody gets it and and even more than that that someone took the amount of time like you did to to put so much passion and time and care um and sensitivity into to telling that story because it does take a lot and um so thank you very much for doing all of that it's nothing compared to what you guys go through. It's oh. nothing compared to it. I I can't even begin to imagine mm-hmm. how it is to wake up every single day with what you people go through. It's it's very difficult and and the uh, and the part of uh, seeing that uh, darker colors. Uh, if you notice, I, I never made her wear bright colors till the end of it. I did notice that. It was always something dull. I did I did see that and that was also what made me cry. <laughs> like all these subtle things I see, I see. I did see that in the ending was again, it was something that I, I did notice that that element. Yeah. Um also I think just from the perspective of of being an artist myself, I notice little things like that with colors and and themes that are included, especially in film, where elements of the story are being very clearly communicated just by a touch or even by the absence of color. So yeah. I saw that and really appreciated it because it's it's very accurate. It's very real. So There, there was like uh, another part, like you were talking about the intimacy. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, intimacy is like a big issue for them. And uh, that's why when they had the intimate scene, I told uh, the actress, when he comes closer to you to uh, come to kiss you, move him away. Mm. Because uh, I have, I mean, with my friend as well, she said that one thing that was supposed to be special has been violated. So I don't want my, uh, I don't want to kiss someone else and let that also go away. So they hold on to these small, small things about their intimacy. So Mm -hmm. I added that small detail as well Mm. in it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, that's again. Uh, it's 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 amazing to hear you articulating it in this way because I, I noticed that as well in the film, and um, it's not something that, like I said, I don't know that I would even be able to describe it the way you just did. But it's it's absolutely true, even for myself. And I I try to find ways. I mean, even in a recent conversation that I had with a friend, I. I, I struggle to be able to articulate to people that aspect of, of the what what I went through, what I've survived, and what survival means on this side of we do. I mean, I, I, I think I can say we because I've, I've heard very similar things, that we mm-hmm. do hold on to things that seem very insignificant to other people, hold tremendous significance yeah. because, because of what was <clears throat> stolen yeah. and what I didn't get a chance to experience in a free, in, freely for myself or by choice. Yeah. So yeah, that's very, that's, that's again, these little, 
um, elements that um, are really important to to illustrate um, the totality of the experience and the things that it, it touches on again years later and in, in in the um, present day experiences of meeting people and trying to build new relationships and things like that it's it's mm. it's extremely complex I mean even if somebody has the, the the resources and ability and the access to for example have a therapist who's trained in trauma because a lot of therapists aren't no offense yeah. to therapists but many are not trained in, in how to work with survivors and so even if somebody has the ability to go and have like a good therapist and good support in that way even with the therapy it's a very complex terrain to navigate um, navigate new relationships of any kind um, and the majority of people I think probably don't don't have the support of of Mm -hmm. um, trauma-informed therapy. So we're kind of all just out here <laughs> fending for ourselves, trying to figure it out. So um, again, it's very it's very powerful to see that um, portrayed um, in film. All right, so last question. Is there anything, because this is also important, like I had said um, when we were getting started, uh, because you had mentioned that there was a lot you would have liked to have been able to say or share mm -hmm. the day of, yeah. of the festival when everything was kind of helter-skelter. Is there anything that you would like to be able to share or anything that you, you know, would like to um, comment on, I guess, in terms of anyone who would be listening to this mm -hmm. podcast or, or watching the video on YouTube? Um, anything that you feel you want to add anything to like in, in terms of depth or things that we haven't touched on or things that you would have liked to have said that day that you want to share at this yeah. point I mean uh, it goes back to like the screening day obviously um, like um, one of the things that one of my teachers said is uh, in the ending I had um, not just women I had men as well and mm -hmm. I had men with uh, nail polish and uh, mm -hmm. someone who were looking effeminate and someone who were looking very masculine as well. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I would really, I w would, I wanted to say there also, and I did, but it couldn't like, in, uh, it was just like a sentence, but I wanted mm -hmm. to say more. Mm -hmm. It's <clears throat> is that it happens to everyone. Yes. And it's not just women. Uh, no, <laughs> these predators, they don't spare anyone. Mm -hmm. It happens to women, girls, boys, uh, transgendered women, transgendered mm -hmm. men, mm -hmm. and it is really, really not touched upon, and a lot of people don't even talk about it. It's so difficult for even men to come out and say that they have been violated in such a way because mm -hmm. it's so difficult to say, and then there are people who make fun of them for even coming out and mm -hmm. saying that, you know, this is my story as well. And uh, it's really, it's really uh, important to give even those people, uh, <clears throat> all the different genders. It's really important to give every single person a platform to say, uh, to uh, not just a platform, a very safe space for them to say that this has happened to me, and uh, I am going through this certain thing, and it shouldn't be taken as a taboo or anything, and it shouldn't be laughed at. It's the it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. The mm. people laughing at it and saying that um, uh, your clothes mustn't be right and your, your whatever bullshit reason that people give mm -hmm. that this must have happened to you. So, yeah, I think uh, that is really important to understand that it happens to anyone and everyone, even animals. Mm -hmm. I actually did plan on having a dog in the last scene because okay. it happens to animals as well, but I couldn't get a dog one time. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh. that but. would have been that would have been great, and and I did notice that, and I really appreciated it as well because it is again, it's this much more full full um, spectrum basically that you were able to um, show at the end of of including the fact that yes, it it happens to everyone, it can happen to anyone. It's it's not um, you know it's not at all gender based or or, yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, like I said on the screening day, that this is not about this is not a film that is about feminism or anything. I, mm -hmm. I don't even want to touch upon all of that mm -hmm. uh, since what it has become now. But mm -hmm. uh, it is a film showing sexual violence. It mm -hmm. happens to be a, a women's story, mm -hmm. but it's not denying that it doesn't happen to the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean I've I've. I have many friends um, 
I mean, I'm non-binary myself, but I have many friends of of all, um, I would say, orientations and identities. Let's let's put it that way. Uh, yeah. Where um, there there is almost a sense of unless you present and and um, occupy a category that's easily identifiable within the context of sexual assault, like people like you're saying, like again, this goes back to what we typically see in mainstream media portrayal of these situations that, and it's, it's not, it's obviously not, um, it's not downplaying the fact that yes, violence towards, uh, uh, women specifically, but everything else and everyone else who's touched by it, we just don't really get shown that much, but it's still happening. Mm -hmm. And, um, the, the layers that a person has to work through to be able to come to terms themselves with what they survived, because I've seen that a lot, especially with some of my, uh, like sort of men identifying friends. I've had conversations where, you know, they've shared with me something that happened and, you know, we have this conversation of where I've said, do you understand what that, what that means and what, what impact it had on you? And a lot of times, especially for guys, there's even just a lot of denial around Mm -hmm. what it is because, Mm -hmm. because of then coming to terms with that and the fact that there isn't very much available in terms of support and people do laugh at people like you said and Mm -hmm. it's disturbing but one of the things that I have come to understand is that um you know because people will say well did you fight back or what were you wearing and they're obviously they're they're questions rooted in a lot of ignorance but I also see it as questions rooted in um unless you have been through something like this unless you're a survivor I think a lot of people resist the idea that they too could be in a situation that it, that there's a lot of people want to believe that, Oh, if I were ever in that situation, I would one, two and three. Well, I wouldn't wear the wrong thing and I would definitely fight back. And like, they have this sort of subconscious unspoken assumption that, well, it wouldn't happen to me and here's why. And it's a self-defense mechanism of not wanting to even contemplate that it can happen to anybody. Yeah, I mean, this this like, um, I think um, four years ago or something, there was this uh, uh, news that came out uh, from the city I'm from, uh, Bangalore. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was this girl, she was walking alone at night, uh, properly clothed, properly clothed. Uh, and... Um, they were, uh, she was gang raped basically. Mm-hmm. And then there was this one thing that I heard at that time is, uh, why was she walking alone at night? Mm-hmm. Is she stupid? And then, uh, and then she must be wearing something wrong. Mm-hmm. If you don't want people to look at you, you should not wear these specific clothes. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, <laughs> I didn't have the time and energy to spend on these people, but to those people who say all of those things, this just, one thing that I'd like to say is that clothes don't matter. Mm-hmm. If it can happen to an infant, then your clothes don't matter. And secondly, she can walk at any time of the day. It's the environment that needs to be safer. She shouldn't always be on guard every fucking time because that is, she has no freedom then. Mm-hmm. Why not tell those people who who did who raped her that um, you shouldn't have been out at night mm-hmm. because everyone else is not safe around you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's it's a fundamental issue, you know, in in society at large that we I I hope will, you know, the more again having talking about this more, just being able to dialogue about it and um, having it again going back to what's portrayed in, in media and what what people feel is acceptable and not acceptable and changing, shifting those things to where um, we can actually put the the responsibility where it should be, which is on perpetrators and not on victims. Yeah. Um, And I think that the more, the more the stories can be shared, the more the stories can be told through uh, things like film movies, but told accurately, like in in your case, um, where where people can can start to get a much better understanding of the reality and not just kind of go on this autopilot thing, like I said, that I think is rooted in a lot of just fundamental ignorance, of course, but also this element of 
wanting to do this self-defensive maneuver of like, well, it couldn't happen to me and here's why. And, and again, like even coming at it from that angle is messed up because it's, it's never about us as potential targets. Mm. It's about the person who's out there holding a gun and looking to see who can be an easy mark. That's, that's the issue. Um, so, so the whole, the whole commentary and, and argument around, well, what were you wearing and, and this, that, the other thing, or why were you out late at night? It's the wrong, it's the wrong argument to begin with. Yeah. And, but it's going it, to, I think it's going to take, I mean, obviously it'll take time, um, to hopefully shift things more to where we, where we, where people start asking the right questions of why is it okay for these people to be out on the streets? Like you said. And there was also um, an instance, which I, unfortunately, I, it's very difficult for me to remember names from news stories, but there was the big story from um, England recently where there was a woman jogging and it was a police officer who um, assaulted her. Oh, yeah. I understand. That was, I think, within like the last year or so. Yeah. Um, and I'll see if I can get the information, maybe add a note for, for the podcast and the video um, for anyone who wants to find out more about that story but that was significant as well at the time because of the fact that it highlighted all over again she literally did nothing wrong and it was someone who's who is supposed to from the point of view of society supposed to protect her and others from perpetrators who ended up being the perpetrator so um it's uh like I said, it's a conversation that I hope the more that it can be talked about and the more that there can be greater understanding about um, the reality of what it means to be a survivor. And as you showed at the, the end of Disquiet with showing that it's it's across the whole spectrum of, of living things, basically. Um, and uh, that it's not about, you know, how a person looks or, or, or anything. If, if, if there's a perpetrator a predator, let's say, they're looking for someone or something um, from that point of view of they just see an object, like you had talked about at the beginning. You know, it's not, they don't see a person, they see an object and a target and an opportunity to try to have power over. I mean, we could be here all day talking about the the psychosis and psychology behind um, perpetrators in, in particular, but... Um, the, the power of showing, like you did at the end of the film, um, that it can happen to anybody. Um, and I really, I appreciated, um, I appreciated that part very much uh, because especially, again, coming back to the intention behind Beauty for Survivors all of these years um, has always been to provide a space and a platform for people who don't usually get to share their story or who may feel that they're not represented at all in in current uh, mainstream media context. I, I want for people to be able to to share their story and to be heard, and to um, to be seen and to be affirmed in that yeah. and to be included in, in the conversation yeah. because it's so important. So, um, thank you for for sharing mm-hmm. that that particular part of of the the process for you and including that element and. I'm really glad that we finally had time to sit down and mm-hmm. and chat about everything because seeing the film and also talking to you that day is something that has just stayed with me this whole time. And uh, bravo and <laughs> and thank you for, like I said, um, putting so much into it and um, the integrity that you brought to the process. And thank you as well for for the time. To, to chat about it, and I hope that we will. I hope that we will all get to see a lot more from you in, in these stories and the way you tell them. And um, yeah, thank you for having me. I, I didn't get a chance to uh, describe my thought process behind the film uh, during the screening, but uh, I now finally got a chance to actually describe what I think and how my process went. And I'm th- th- really thankful to you. Oh. Whew, amazing, right? Incredible. 
Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for taking the time to stick around and listen to this amazing conversation. And thank you for being part of the Beauty for Survivors community. I would love to hear from you if you'd like to be interviewed, if you know someone that you think should be interviewed, or if you would like to sponsor the production in any way, that would be amazing. I'm gonna leave all of my contact information in the video, below the video, you can find me on Instagram as well. Just type in Beauty for Survivors and it'll pop right up. The handle is Beauty X Survivors on Instagram. Come and join us. Be part of this amazing project and this amazing community. I hope you have an amazing day and I cannot wait to see you back here for the next episode of Beauty for Survivors. This is Rafaela and Magellan, who you can't see, signing off for now. See you soon. Bye-bye. Hello, welcome to the first episode. <laughs> the first episode. Yes. <laughs>